The Geometry Dash community has seen many top 1 demons rise and fall over the years, with some being so memorable and refined for their time that they attain a legendary status, garnering the praise of many, while others turn out incredibly unremarkable, being forgotten very quickly. And in this video, we'll be drawing the line that separates the outstanding from the mediocre by ranking all top 1 demons in GD history from worst to best. But it wouldn't be fair to compare ancient levels like Demon Park to something more current like Digital Descent, so this video will be divided in four different sections. The pre-1.9 era, where our only rank levels that were released before 1.9, the 1.9 era itself, the 2.0 era, and the 2.1 era. Moreover, for a level to be in this video, it must have been widely considered the hardest level at some point, and I won't be analyzing gameplay for obvious reasons. That said, let's get right into it. At the bottom of this section lies the Hell World, a very repetitive level that reuses ideas a lot. For instance, this chain of yellow orbs concept is seen three times in total, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. You see this specific ball part? There's six other ball parts oddly similar to it. Still not convinced? Then take a look at this neat idea of using four small spikes with a mirror portal on top. That's reused seven times, five of which are in this section alone. Point is, worldwide plastic pollution wouldn't even be a thing if humanity did 5% of this level's recycling. And that's without mentioning all those hollow structures that do as good a job of filling up space as Robtop does of releasing 2.2. BP Knight, on the other hand, isn't as hollow as the Hell World for the most part, but it somehow manages to be emptier than a bank account in these ball sections, because not only do they lack deco, they also have literally no structuring to speak of. And while lacking deco can be excusable for a level this old, lacking structures is not, as even Stereo Madness has better structuring than this. Furthermore, BP9 feels rushed and unfinished, and that's because it's very unpolished. From things clipping into each other, to small stuff that's missing, to big stuff that's also missing, it undeniably has a low quality aura shining through it. To its credit though, this x step inspired section looks kinda decent, too bad it's only like 5 seconds long, and unlike BP9, the Hell Origin is actually decent all the way through, visually speaking. It's got some nice structure variety going on, and no part sticks out as worse or emptier than the rest. The only thing I dislike here are those out of the grid blocks. They just don't look good in my opinion and make the level feel unclean. Though I get being experimental in GD 1.5 isn't the easiest task, but there are better ways to be experimental, even with 1.5's limited level editor. Also, there are some unfinished platforms here and there, but it's hard to notice at first. However, these polish issues are more noticeable in the Hell Zone because it's got this right at the beginning, alongside the Affirmation platforms issue. But Sync here is better than the Hell Origins, which makes the level flow so much smoothly, despite it being rough around the edges. But even then, it still feels samey throughout, because visuals are not varied enough to keep the level feeling fresh. A level that does a good job at this is Heaven and Hell, as it actually has a main level concept that guides its designs and mixes things up from part to part. That being the idea that some sections seem hell-like, while others give off Heaven vibes, even though it might not seem like it at first. Back when Heaven and Hell was made, it wasn't as easy to express an idea visually as it is today, so we gotta use our imagination to understand what's being conveyed in each part. Color palette choice, for example, might seem arbitrary at first, but actually plays a big role here, as Hell sections usually go with a red and black combo or even total darkness, while Heaven parts make use of blue and a goldish yellow. This type of stuff may appear small for us nowadays, but having theming be clear enough that I can actually tell which sections are meant to be Hell or Heaven is definitely commendable for 1.3 level. Except for this single part, where theming gets a bit blurry, and I can't decide if it's Hell themed or Heaven themed. On top of that, this very same part also has the worst sync in the whole level, so it's kinda like Partition's channel. The world would simply be a better place if it didn't exist. But even though this section doesn't quite fit in here, it may have inspired the iconic orb spams in Silent Club, except it syncs a bit better there. Silent Club's also more atmospheric, with all of its dark, claustrophobic, and anxiety-filled corridors, which granted its signature experimental vibes while keeping a fine balance between chaotic and concise, mostly. And I say mostly because the cool, eerie atmosphere disappears at times, leaving us with sections like these. That's so blindingly bright, I can almost hear my eyes screaming in agony as I forcibly stare at it. So overall, Silent Club has some nice aspects, but if you're concerned with your eyesight, take note that staring at the sun for 2 hours straight and then stabbing your eyes will probably do less damage than playing through these sections once. 
And if you think old levels are doomed to have bad looking sections just because they're dated, I present to you Extreme Park, a 1.2 level that doesn't have any eyesore parts due to its clean design direction which is inspired by Jumper. But that's a double edged sword, cause while being Jumper themed grants Extreme Park clean aesthetics, it also strips it of any variety, as Jumper itself is very repetitive. And that's also true for Extreme Park, it feels the exact same from start to finish, growing stale over time due to things never being changed in the slightest. And no, background color fading to something else every 10 seconds isn't enough to make a level engaging for a whole minute and a half. The ideal scenario here would be for Extreme Park to be a bit more like To the Grave by Darnock, which has way better variety, visually speaking. Some structures such as these are only used once in the entire level, and its rich variety isn't exclusively due to good structuring either, but also due to it having different set pieces throughout, for lack of a better term. And what I mean by set pieces is stuff that attracts attention in each part, making them stand out. For example, this is the part where you go inside a platform, this one's a limbo part, and these have unique platforms that aren't used anywhere else. Furthermore, To the Grave is so polished that it could honestly be placed among Rob Top levels at the time and it'd fit right in. That's not something you can say about most levels released in 1.2. However, it does borrow most of its ideas from Rob Top levels, so it's kinda forgettable and soulless in a way, despite being a good stage. It's high quality, but not unique enough to be memorable. Demon Park, on the other hand, is so memorable you can probably picture it just by hearing its name, and every GD player in a 10 mile radius recognizes this section at the very least, but that's likely due to Demon Park's immense popularity, to be frank. Still though, Demon Park is iconic because it broke standards in many ways, from smaller stuff such as using spikes inside blocks for aesthetics, which was pretty unorthodox for 1.2, to bigger things like using grey in multiple parts that went directly against the status quo of copying the Rob Top style, since at the time, none of the main Rob Top levels had any grey colored parts, and most creators back then just tried perfecting that style without realizing they were actually hurting their level's uniqueness by following the rules, instead of breaking the mode and being experimental. And that's without mentioning the fact that the Demon difficulty was created because of Demon Park, which is a testament to how influential it is, but you already knew that. However, no level is perfect, and the lack of polish in the very first section can't go unnoticed, with unfinished platforms being a recurring issue here, but thankfully, it doesn't expand to the rest of the level. Moreover, the last part is clearly rushed, but it's also relatively short, so I'm pretty much nitpicking at this point. Another highly experimental stage for its time is Stereo Demon as by Majeko, a level that stands out through its originality and interesting platforms, which are basically an early attempt at making art in GD. And even the structures that are not meant to be art at all still look pretty cool and distinct for the most part. But although Stereo Demonus is very recognizable, it's not the most consistent level, at least in terms of quality. Take its platforms for example. Sometimes they're really good, but sometimes they're really bad. What am I even looking at here? It honestly feels like Majeko turned his brain off while making these sections and just went, hmm, I need to fill all this empty space, but what would be the best way to do that? Wait, I know exactly what to do. I'll just use the most bland 1.0 block imaginable a million freaking times and it'll look absolutely stunning. 10 out of 10 has a little something for everyone, IGN. In all seriousness though, sync is at times questionable to say the least, like in this UFO where you're straight up forced to spam for 69 years non-stop without any sync whatsoever, and some structures are unfinished or just look bad. But if you can look past all of that, there's definitely some appreciation to be had for this level because it's very creative with all of its quirky art, and it's got an interesting mechanical, techish atmosphere as well. But although its atmosphere is good and all, it's not nearly as consistent as Ice Carbon Diablo X in this regard, because ICDX never drops the ball when it comes to theming, as it is club step themed all the way through, without any out of place parts. Moreover, it's also way more polished than Stereo Demonus, and feels almost as refined as club step itself, while also having more sinister vibes, with all these creepy corridors that kinda remind me of Silent Club in a way. The downside of being heavily inspired by something else though, is that the balance between looking like the source material and doing your own thing is very tough to keep. If you stray too far from your inspirations, your stuff won't resemble the source material at all, and if you base yourself too much on someone else's work, yours will simply come off as a cheap knockoff. And that's the only major flaw in ICDX. It borrows too much from club step in some sections, like this UFO for instance, that looks nearly identical to its club step counterpart, without adding anything new to it. But to be completely honest, the over-reliance on club step ideas problem is not all that frequent in ICDX, as most parts that are reminiscent of club step usually add something new to the source material without blatantly copying it. So in my humble opinion, ICDX is the best pre-1.9 top 1 due to it being an all-around good stage and its qualities far outweighing its flaws. It's got consistent theming, is not unpolished, has decent sync, and is, without a shadow of a doubt, a very iconic piece of Geometry Dash history. 
Oh, and before we move on to the 1.9 levels, I know I didn't review Element 1 on NRG, but I didn't forget about it. You can check disclaimers in the description to know why it was left out, if you care, of course, and on to the 1.9 section, I guess. To kick the 1.9 division off, we have Phobos, a mega collab with severe consistency issues. The theming for one is very unreliable, with parts that don't fit at all being a frequent problem, which is caused by the completely aimless design direction. And what I mean by that is that the visuals don't seem to be trying to achieve anything like a concise theming and feel or any sort of atmosphere building, they're simply arbitrary and pointless, and I'll show you why. By the looks of the first section, it feels like it's gonna be hell themed, but then it gets all green for some reason, and then there's this Acropolis inspired section right after that. All of what I just described happens in the span of 7 seconds, which goes to show how utterly inconsistent Phobos really is, and I could go on with the part by part dissection, but that would take too long, so I'll summarize. 8 parts are hell themed, 3 are black and white, 3 are this poisonous green, and 3 are a colorful flashy style, which includes these two glow parts, and the single messiest, most broken, and insufferably abysmal mega collab part I've ever seen, and I'm dead freaking serious when I say that, but we'll get to it later. But now you may be thinking, Hmm, most of those parts are hell themed, so it's not as bad as they're making it out to be. And that seems like a reasonable line of thought, until you realize this is not a numbers game. It doesn't matter how many hell sections there are, the issue here is that they're constantly being interrupted by three other styles that often clash with it and among themselves. If Phobos was a 50-50 mix of the hell and grey scale themes, I'd be totally okay with it, because the black and white aesthetics would go pretty well with the hellish vibes, as both of them are dark and eerie, so they would at least have something in common. What I don't get, however, is how they thought it was a good idea to mix those two styles with something like this. This green is so bright, I could literally crawl my key stuff into it. Hey y'all, Scott here. Moreover, those colorful bits I mentioned previously don't fit either. Speaking of which, it's about time I show you the horrendously bad section I told you about, so brace yourselves and put on your biohazard suits, cause I'm about to expose you to some radioactive trash. <laughs> Frankly, I don't even know what to say about this, it feels like my brain melts a little bit every time I look at it. To be honest though, Phobos would still suck even if this part didn't exist, so it's not that big of a deal, but it couldn't go unmentioned. Next up on the list, we have Theory of Darkness, a level that's way more consistent than Phobos because its theming doesn't change every 5 seconds for god's sake, and it doesn't have any dumpster fire parts. In fact, Phobos is kind of the opposite of Theory of Darkness. While the former changes things up so much it becomes aimless, the latter doesn't mix things up enough and ends up feeling repetitive as a result. Making levels is a balancing act between these two extremes, because while a consistent design direction is needed for any good level, you also have to introduce new ideas as your level progresses, to keep it fresh and interesting. And Theory of Darkness doesn't do a very good job at that, it just looks the same up until this last part, where things change a bit, but it's too little too late, as the level's pretty much over when that change happens. At least the style shift has a reason to exist though, that being the dramatic piano by the end of the song, and it kinda fits with the overall classic 1.6 vibes. All in all, Theory of Darkness is a bit like Extreme Park, in the sense that it's polished and consistent, but also forgettable and uninteresting at the same time. A level that's not nearly as forgettable though, is Sonic Wave, as it's widely seen as legendary by the community, but I disagree. This may get me into some hot water, but I honestly don't think it's all that special. It's 9 circles but cyan, and with a different song I guess. However, although it's not the most unique level, at least theming is consistent from start to finish, and parts in between wave sections look different than most 9 circles levels, so it's definitely not the worst of its kind. But other than that, I don't have much to analyze here. It's a 9 circles level, you all know how those go. And if you're looking for a stage relatively more unique than Sonic Wave, there's a coup in hell by Nubis, although it's not exactly the pinnacle of originality either, as it's heavily inspired by Cataclysm. But despite its inspirations, it's got some interesting effects that make it feel more atmospheric and alive. Like these visualizer looking things, and stuff like these simple animations that that do a very good job at reinforcing the hell theme by trying to resemble flowing lava or fire, which makes the theming very consistent. The only thing I'm not very fond of in Sakupen Hell is the very last section, as it's way too underdecorated in comparison to the rest, and thus, it doesn't belong. However, I do know that Nubus ran out of objects here, so it's understandable that this part doesn't fit well with the others. 
By the way, you may have noticed that this far, I didn't mention structuring at all in the 1.9 section and that's because the previous levels here just had decent structuring with no notoriously good or bad examples of platform building to analyze, as they were all average in this regard. And unlike all of those, Future Demon is actually has structuring that's worth mentioning, and for the right reasons. Platforms here look surprisingly detailed and intricate, and they're also paired with equally elaborate air deco, like in this part where air deco is symmetrical, much like the platforms. And as a symmetry maniac, I really do appreciate it. Moreover, the cool block designs and air decos are very consistent too, so it goes without saying that theming is strong and reliable in Future Demonists, and I don't have any major criticisms of the level as a whole, only tiny part by part flaws, the biggest one being this egregiously bad looking section, though it smiles better than actual trash parts, like that infamous Phobos one, or Silent Club's eyesores, so it's more of a soft eyesore in Future Demonists, because it does make my eyes hurt when I look at it, but that simply happens because there's way too much pure white on the screen at once, not due to the visuals being complete garbage, like in those two examples I mentioned. Also, the last part drags for way longer than it should and really overstays its welcome. It'd be much better to simply add a triple spike there and call it a day, but that's just me. Moving on, we have one of the most influential levels of all time, Cataclysm. With its clean effects and solid theming across the board, it definitely lives up to its legendary status, as it's actually good looking and isn't just famous because of its high difficulty, like Sonic Wave for example. Moreover, while these effects might not seem as impressive nowadays, you need to take into account that in 1.9, we didn't have infinite color channels like we do now, but a measly 4, and that alone made stuff like this pretty hard to pull off back then, as it had to reuse those 4 channels for basically all effects throughout the whole level. And that limitation caused some parts to not have any effects at all, because color channels had to be saved for the next big effects part, which is why some parts look lacking in comparison to others. But that's an understandable issue, as it's not the creator's fault, but simply a byproduct of not having enough color channels to work with. You could say Cataclysm's effects were a bit too ambitious for their time, so they couldn't be perfectly executed. And that's where Bloodbath really shines, because while its effects may not be as ambitious as Cataclysm's, it does still have nice visuals, without making them too complicated, to the point where it makes the level less consistent as a whole. Picture the 1.9 level editor as an old supercar that can cruise at a certain max speed. Cataclysm stepped on the gas too much and forced the car way past its limit, which made it necessary to stop and fix the overheated engine from time to time, while Bloodbath went as fast as the car could without exceeding the speed limit or forcing the car too much. Cheap analogies aside, Bloodbath is more consistent than Cataclysm because its effects are simpler and don't require as many color groups per section to be achieved. Furthermore, Bloodbath is one of the most iconic GD levels ever, and I don't think I need to explain why, you just know it's true. Every single frame of it is easily recognizable, and sure, that's in part due to its immense popularity, but it's also because all sections are visually interesting and varied, while keeping a consistent theme, which is way harder to pull off in mega collabs than in solo projects like Cataclysm. Now this is the part of the review where I would show the negatives of a level and criticize it, but honestly, I don't really think there's anything wrong with Bloodbath, and looking for complete non-issues to complain about would just make my review unfair and extremely nitpicky, so I'm not gonna go down that path. Bloodbath is a 1.9 masterpiece, and if I tried denying that, I would be lying to you. Well, I would also get cancelled on GD Twitter, but that's besides the point. To start off the shortest segment of this video, we have a ton of those at the bottom. And to get things straight, it's not a bad level per se, it just happens to be the worst top one in 2.0, which doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. There's only one thing about it that's good though, that being the consistent theming. One thing that really bothers me in Athanatos is the fact that some orbs and portals are colored pitch black or red, while others use the default colors. And it's not like they're all black in one part and then all default in the next, cause I'd be okay with that, but they're literally used together in the same part, multiple times, which is just... Oh and some block designs are broken, such as this one where the club step monster seems to be unfinished, though you could argue it's like that on purpose, but it still looks like trash regardless. Moreover, call me nitpicky all you want, but I can't help but notice this misaligned block right there, and most of the block designs look pretty messy, at least in my opinion. All of those might seem small, but they do add up over time, and the messy block designs here and there make the level feel unpolished and lower quality as a whole, the more you notice them. And this level feels faceless because it doesn't have any iconic set pieces, like for example, Evasium's part in Bloodbath. Quack, by the way. An extreme that excels at memorability while also being hell themed is the bird demon itself, Yadagarasu. And what makes it so iconic is mainly the arts, that despite not being shown very often, still make the level unique, and help it stand out in the oversaturated space of hell levels. However, you don't necessarily need art to create a memorable stage, it's just one of the many tools that can make a level stand out more. 
and the Argerasu doesn't rely solely on its art by the way, as it also has some unique set pieces, like this part with a bunch of text that literally screams the Argerasu and you can easily tell what level it's from by simply looking at a frame of it. Moreover, the theming is also very solid, and that's due to Viper and Riot doing a good hosting job, so kudos to them. But while theming is consistent, overall quality is not, as some parts look ugly and overdecorated, while others have stunningly refined visuals. But this is more of a personal thing, as I'm not a big fan of overdecorated styles, and would take something like this over that any day of the week. Furthermore, I feel like trigger usage is questionable at times. Like, for example, some stuff moves with no easing whatsoever, and the alpha trigger is used on art sometimes, which should never be done, as GD art always has tons of overlapping objects, so when opacity is lowered, the overlapping pieces are made visible, and it just looks broken. However, I get that creators were still figuring out how to properly use 2.0 features back then, so I'm gonna cut them some slack. A stage with considerably better trigger usage is Artificial Ascent, as everything that's in motion here moves somewhat smoothly, and quality is very consistent from part to part, as most sections are very polished and look good individually. The only big flaw in Artificial Ascent is its weak design direction, because although parts have great visuals, they don't fit all that well when put together, and Artificial Ascent feels aimless as a result. It seems like every creator just built based on their styles, without thinking about theming too much, and this is what I mean. Manix's part is very much Manix, in the sense that it looks like something he'd do on a solo project, and that also applies to other creators' parts. Edzer's part is very Edzer, Teron's part is very Teron, and Viper's part is very Cancer, just to name a few. Point is, theming is very inconsistent, and this is kinda tragic, because this level wasn't even gonna be a mega collab in the first place, but a solo level by Ancient Anubis, and he wanted Artificial Ascent to look like an abandoned factory that gradually went online as it progressed. He also intended to add an element of horror, and all of that sounds super exciting. It really makes me wish we had the original version with all these sick design ideas, but unfortunately, Anubis lost all his data one month after starting the project, which ultimately led to Artificial Ascent being turned into the mega collab we all know today, for better or for worse. We finally got to this video's last section, and I'm gonna be opening it with Erebus, which is by far the worst looking top 1 in the 2.1 era. There's only 3 types of parts in this level, eyesore parts, messy parts, and empty parts. And I'm not even joking, every section of Erebus is one of those 3, with no exceptions. Moreover, the stage is supposed to be some sort of radioactive lab or poisonous wasteland, hence why all the green, but I fail to see the logic behind some decisions here. For instance, why is it named Erebus when that's just the name of a region in Greek mythology through which the dead must pass before reaching Hades? That concept has literally no connection to radiation or poison, so why name the level after it? The song he used also lacks any connection to those ideas, so it feels like the creators picked a random ass name from Greek mythology and some dubstep music I guess. This might not seem like a big deal, but those details do add up when it comes to making a design direction feel fully realized, and the nonsensical level name combined with an arbitrary song choice really don't help the case of an already struggling level. Another level that took its name from Greek mythology is Tartarus, but here it makes sense at least, since in Greek mythology, Tartarus is a deep abyss that's used to punish people, and I'd say the level also does that pretty well. No! Anyways, Tartarus is just in such a low spot on my rankings because it simply can't compete with most extremes in this section, as it looks really outdated, to the point where if you told me it's a 1.9 level and I didn't know it's Tartarus, I'd believe you. And that's because it technically is a 1.9 level, but it's complicated. Tartarus started being worked on somewhere in 1.9, and according to Riot, was abandoned and restarted many times, which caused it to take so long that the level was only finished in early 2018, one year after 2.1's release. That's why it feels so old. But honestly, it's kinda impressive that the level of quality from part to part is as consistent as it is, despite the mega collab taking ages to be finalized. However, Tartarus is just another Sonic Wave type of level, where it's only known due to its immense difficulty and doesn't really have anything interesting going for it. Just the usual club step monster variations, with no arts whatsoever, no memorable parts that stand out, and stale structuring. All of that makes it incredibly forgettable, as it basically looks like Cataclysm, except with none of the neat effects and way less memorable. An extreme that looks far more current than Tartarus is the Golden, but it's not nearly as old, so that's expected. One thing I like about the Golden is how atmospheric it feels, with all its vines and sun rays cutting through the darkness, it's really immersive. In fact, the idea behind the level is that you're exploring a jungle in hopes of finding El Dorado, a city of gold with untold riches, and you do find it after beating the level, but the treasured city is just on the end screen, which I find a bit disappointing. It'd be much more satisfying if you found El Dorado before the level ended, and the last two parts were golden temples filled with fancy statues and ancient artifacts. Now that would be a gold experience, but all of this potential was wasted, and that's a shame. 
I also think the jungle theming itself could be executed better, because other than the aforementioned vines and sun rays, there aren't many other visuals that allude to the idea of a jungle. So a section with waterfalls, for example, would not only make the theming better, but also grant the stage itself more variety, which is something that it desperately needs, as it relies solely on those vines and sun rays all the way through, and they get old fast. However, having tons of unique design ideas is not necessary. Something as simple as the varied plasma-like stuff in Plasma Pulse Finale would already do the trick, as PPF doesn't have many design ideas other than the electricity thingies, but the level stays fresh as you progress because there's a good amount of variation on the single idea. For instance, this part uses that electricity object, others have glows that look like plasma, and this one cleverly uses a 1.9 object in such a way that it looks like bolts of lightning. And to top it all off, the electricity theming pairs perfectly with the song here, as it literally sounds like Tesla coils but dubstep. Kinda, but you get what I mean, it fits well with the level. But other than the theming, it doesn't have much else going for it, so PPF is still somewhat forgettable, despite its well-executed theme. Structuring is particularly lacking here, with very blocky platforms everywhere, which is not a bad thing per se, but I feel like chaotic structures would make more sense in this case, since electricity itself moves in a very twitchy, unpredictable fashion, so going with the most predictable platforms possible seems contradictory to PPF's core design direction. An extreme with arguably better theming though is Stalemate Redux, a level that starts off like every other hell level, but then gets a bit darker in the first wave, which is followed up by an even darker UFO section, and the song gets increasingly more eerie as you progress, so the atmosphere growing more and more creepy with every part not only feels natural, but is also executed surprisingly well. And after this prime example of atmosphere building, the creators take the most logical next step here, which would be to take the whole atmosphere they spent half a level building and throw it out in a trash can. The section right after that creepy UFO I mentioned is filled with this piss yellow left and right, and it doesn't feel dark or frightening at all, it's just ugly and completely ruins the eerie vibes. To adding soul to injury, this trash part goes on from 54% all the way to 75, and sure, they do try to go back to the dark thing by the end, but it's not enough, as the atmosphere had already been destroyed by then. Crimson Planet, on the other hand, has consistent theming throughout, but the drawback is that it's just another hell level, so it's not as intriguing as Stalemate Redux would be if it's stuck with that creepy ambience. One thing Crimson Planet does way better than Stalemate Redux, though, is block design, as it's got very detailed platforms and I see a lot of effort here. However, there's one section where I believe they cross the line and there's too much detail, and it's Teron's part. This is simply way too overdecorated and doesn't look good, at least in my opinion, and frankly, there isn't much more to go on about here, it's just a short hell level with intricate block designs plus an overdecorated part, and that's pretty much it. Contrastingly, a top one with no overdecorated sections is Zodiac by Bionox and more, as all of its parts look decent at the very least. The only section with a noticeable technical issue here is this one near the end, and I know this is small, but the background visualizer goes on top of air deco there, and that's due to incorrect layering, which makes this part distinctively messier than the rest of Zodiac. This is the type of flaw that even when you don't notice it, you can still tell that something's off, and the whole section ends up feeling cheap as a result. Furthermore, I find the glow theming here to be an immense waste of potential, because a very intriguing design concept, that being the signs of the zodiac, simply goes unused throughout the entire stage, and they only use that idea on the end screen, which is as much of a bummer as the golden only showing El Dorado when the level's already over. Imagine how interesting Zodiac would be if instead of this inexpressive glow theme, they went with a shifting theme where each part would be designed around one sign of the zodiac. By way of illustration, let me give you some examples. The Aquarius part would be themed around water, the Scorpio part would be an arid desert, the Taurus one a burning hell, and so on for all 12 signs of the zodiac. And then the last section could be space themed, with platforms looking like constellations surrounded by space dust, and the background could be some sort of motion graphics involving the zodiac symbols. That would tie perfectly with the current end screen and make for a much more unique experience. And it took me, an average level decorator, around 5 minutes to come up with these ideas, so imagine what the brilliant creators in Zodiac would be able to accomplish if only they put their minds to it. Speaking of theming, you remember when I said I wish we got the original Artificial Ascent by Ancient Anubis? That one about an abandoned factory that gradually went alive as you progressed? Yeah, we sorta have it, and it's called Digital Descent. In it, you can actually see the original design direction by Ancient Anubis shine through a bit, in parts like this one, where it looks like a tech complex being awakened, same with Terran's part, and some of the later parts, like Serponges, are all I wanted Artificial Ascent to be, an immersive adventure through a crumbling facility. Moreover, it's also very consistent, with every single part having tech vibes in some way. This top one would literally be flawless if it wasn't for a single part, Manix's. Although Manix is a good creator and all, he really missed the mark with these overblown colors. It's all too much for a single part, and the fact that the other parts look so good makes this one look even worse in comparison. 
and the designs themselves also have obscene amounts of overlapping, which gives off a very messy feel to go with the questionable color scheme. And that's the single reason why Bloodlust comes out on top of Digital Descent, because much like its predecessor, Bloodlust has close to no flaws from a level design standpoint, other than the alpha trigger being used in art. But that's an exceedingly tiny issue, and not a single part sticks out as worse than the rest. This level balances itself on a very thin line when it comes to overdecoration, as some parts seem to be 10 objects away from being overdecorated, but they're not quite there. And it's really impressive how close Bloodlust gets from being overdecorated without looking ugly or messy. It never drops the ball anywhere. And what's more, this level is based on one of the most iconic extremes of all time, so it borrows every unique Bloodbath set piece and builds up on all of it massively, with captivating art, sophisticated block designs, and memorable set pieces of its own. To put it simply, Bloodlust is a perfect sequel to an already remarkable stage. And the result? The most legendary top 1 in Geometry Dash history. But it's not gonna be in that position forever, as there are tons of exciting projects in the works, and with quality standards reaching new heights by the day, I honestly can't wait to see what mesmerizing top 1s the Geometry Dash community will create in the upcoming years. But only time will tell. In the meantime, I'm gonna go try beating a top 1 and crash at the first jump for half an hour straight, and then inevitably give up because I suck major balls, and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye!